Okay, well, Game of Thrones is ending. Funny that we're talking about this. It's a li- That's the main course. Mm-hmm. I have to wake up the next day and have breakfast, so I'll get the prequel. What if this becomes my new... Fuck today. Tomorrow comes movies. Hey, this is Steve Cardenas, a.k.a. Rocky the Red Power Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and you are watching Tomorrow Comes Movies. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies, the podcast that talks beyond movies. We talk video games, not music, comics, television, Star Wars, pop culture, Funko, and much more. As always, your host are the Patrick and... Carissa. Master Chief never misses Black Friday. Episode 54. So we are back. I hope everyone enjoyed our prospect review and the interviews with Sophie Thatcher, Chris Codwell, and... Zeke Earl, and today is Thanksgiving. So Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. You will hear this on Black Friday, so I hope your Thanksgiving was fantastic. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going, Black Friday, I don't think of listening to a podcast. I'm going to go out, do some Christmas shopping, do my own shopping. I'm going to go check out a movie. But Tomorrow Comes Movies wants to make this Black Friday special, too, if you're tuning in on the day that it comes out is that we got some real special, which we'll be talking about later on in this episode. It's huge. Nobody knows about it. We're really very self-contained on this one. Usually we tell a lot of people you know in our inner circle. You tell people like, oh my god, guess what we're going to be doing? This is crazy. And I have to say, I cannot believe I actually fanned out with that. Krissa was so jacked up for this special thing that we did that she also does a part in there that is very reminiscent of Queen. So Thanksgiving, we are here doing a live episode for you on Black Friday, because starting Fridays, what will we be doing, Krista? We'll be dropping an episode every Friday. We're going to drop a couple more randomly throughout the week, but every Friday, moving forward, you will get a episode from Tomorrow Comes Movies. Yes! <laughs> that is a pinky promise. A pinky promise um, with the listeners and her, not, yeah, not between know, us. Right? Um, so, just a quick little update. Um, we are a little behind on content, but... Technically not our fault. We are having some vehicle difficulties. My car is still in the shop. Yeah, we still have that setback. And I'm waiting to see now, is it going to be considered totaled or repairable? So hopefully I get something back within the next week. Well, the damage to our podcast of not getting reviews as told, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but because of that, sorry, we'll go off on a tangent here. Because of that, we are a little behind on movies but we have some stuff in the can already to release. So mm-hmm. since not being able to travel around the town as much, we've had time to record reviews on movies that we've watched a while ago. We watched yes. twice. And so we have a couple of those coming out. And then um, just be patient with us with a couple of the other ones. Um, we will be actually watching Creed this Saturday. Creed 2. Whatever happens, it happens soon with my car. Fingers crossed, and hopefully no episodes are lost. I know, right? That's not funny. That's not funny at all. All right, let's get right into this episode then. All right, so in the what's going on, back on episode 46, timestamp 30 minutes exactly, we talked about a untitled Deadpool film that was coming in. Why are you rolling oh, your eyes already? Oh, my God. That was coming into this year's uh, release window that took over Alita Battle Angels. Which yeah, got- I wasn't very happy about that. I love Alita Battle Angel. I haven't even watched it yet. I know I'm going to love it. Yeah, so am I. I'm, I'm real jacked up for it. It comes out uh, February, I think it's Valentine's Day weekend, around that time. Yeah. Well, we thought we had the title back on f- episode 47, timestamp mm-hmm. 1 minute and 9 seconds. Mm-hmm. There was a rumor it was going to be called The Deadpool Before Christmas. That's cute. I love that title. I was really hoping that was going to be the title. It is not the title. What is the title? The title is Once Upon a Deadpool. Okay. (laughs) And this is going to feature new scenes as we talked about. They're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a a throwback kind of, I don't know what you would say, uh, interpretation of like Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know this is PG-13 and a reason why I want to see it now is because half or not half, but a part of the proceeds will be going to a charity. Okay, okay, okay. Ryan Reynolds said that since 2006, Mm -hmm. Fox has asked him to do a PG-13 Deadpool. Mm -hmm. And he said no. No. But finally, he caved in on two conditions. One, part of the ticket sales proceeds would go to that charity. Mm -hmm. And two, if he could kidnap Fred Savage. Oh, my God. Now, he said that... (laughs) He said that... 
one of the conditions was real easy to get, you know, get confirmed. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. The second one, he said, it took a little convincing. Which one do you think that was? The Fred says, Savage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a Fred Savage. And also, the release date has changed. It went from December 21st. It's being bumped up to December 12th. I wonder why. It's the 12th day of Christmas. No, <laughs> 12 days before Christmas, right? Oh, no, 13. Mm-hmm. Ah. Well, I don't know. I'm excited for. It. I know you're I think, not. I don't think because it would have it would have went up well against Mary Poppins, which comes out on the 19th. Exactly, that's what and, it was too. Um, Aquaman, Aquaman, Bumblebee. Yeah. So I think so it's going to be competing with uh, Into uh, the Spider Verse. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, that it can compete with that. I'm excited for. It. I know you're not. I'm not. Why? I mean, it's, <sighs> it's, it cracks me up. I don't really feel like I needed this. I love Deadpool too. I know you did. I know you did it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I well, don't. I think the only reason I'm not gonna watch it is because it goes to charity. That's that's a good point, but yeah. not a little bit about like what are they gonna do? like you? S- we're gonna be talking about the trailer yeah. a little bit later, and you actually were giggling on that trailer. You I was, was laughing because I'm thinking the same thing. Oh my goodness! All right, well, December twelfth, Once Upon a Deadpool, excuse me, will be coming out, and I can't wait for it. I know. I'm getting more jacked up I as I are. see Why the, you're the promotional. About it, you're like, oh. Yeah, I mean, how can you not? I mean, Deadpool. Is like a joke in itself, so he can just constantly do strange things that other heroes can't do. Nah. Like, you couldn't see Captain America doing this. Like, no way. He would rather help everyone. <laughs> All right, let's get into the TV news. Now, Game of Thrones. We Game love of that Thrones. show. I love it. Next April. Mm-hmm. Oh, finally. We can finally talk finally. about this. We've been trying to figure this out. When is <sighs> Game of Thrones? I can't wait. Going to be airing, and it will be in April. Now, hasn't that been the norm a little bit, right? But there were rumors that it was possibly going to be pushed back into later. Yeah, we had talked like, about it on into, another episode. Into, I don't into, remember. Into the summer. Yeah, or even like but normally, end of, of next year, yeah, around normal, this time. But normally it is in the spring. Yeah, it's usually, what, March, April, and then it got pushed back last last year to May, right? Yeah, or June or something like that. Because it was last year, right? It came out, so we had to so wait a So there are rumors that we might... Get it towards the end of 2019. Now, we're big Game of Thrones fans. Yes. The stakes are high. Oh, this yeah. This is the last season. All I need to know is if Khaleesi's going to make it. That's all I care about. And also if Gendry's ever going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Gendry? No. Like, that's all you care about? No, I just want to see, because for those who haven't seen Game of Thrones, your fault. <laughs> no, I want to know, because... I think she'll the- so, die. Well, the whole point of Game of Thrones is everyone's battling for the throne. Yes. Now, her her whole story arc throughout this whole series mm-hmm. is her getting to Westeros and claiming mm-hmm. her birthright. Mm-hmm. Now, for those who haven't seen it, we know there's there's somebody else that could possibly, you know, in line for that. Mm-hmm. But I'm just curious to see what happens when she actually shows up permanently in Westeros with this huge army. Like, since season one, we're like, mm-hmm. here we go. Mm-hmm. You know, is it going to be like Jason Moa, no pun intended, because he was in Game of Thrones, showing up like, all right, I dig it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I hear claim Westeros. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm excited for it. I think it's cool. I was actually thinking that they should just not come out in April, because I don't want them to rush it. Yeah. Because I'm a little worried. I'm like, just, it's okay well, if you have to wait a little longer. Well, they just, fil- they just finished filming, and now they're working. Editing. Oh. Editing. Yeah. Can you imagine being in that room having to edit all that great material and then yeah. making it just enough for each episode? Well, each episode is like, supposed to be like a, an hour and a half, 90 minutes, It's like right? a movie. Yeah, yeah, each one's a movie. So we're getting 10 movies, right? No, wait, no. It's six episodes. So we're getting... Six episodes? It's only six episodes, oh I believe. Oh, my God. I don't know about that. You better, like, fact check Or maybe that. it's eight. No, I think... Remember they short... What was the last season? It was six, right? No. What? Here, I'm going to look it up no. real quick. No way. I think... I think no. No, no, no. I, I think so. Hold on here. Here we go. Six episodes. So, it will only be six episodes. I just looked this up. Wow. And I think this was the same... It was the same Mm -hmm. number for the last season. It was either six, seven, or eight. I think it was seven. Seven. There you go. So, it's even going to be shorter. Concerned. A little bit. A little bit, huh? I -hmm. mean, are you that jacked up for the season? Are the stakes high that you're worried? Because last season was a little bit of a... I liked it, but there was some uh, questionable story, and it didn't always make sense, and it seemed like they were rushing. Now, we know because they're trying to come out with some stupid series that nobody wanted to watch about if the Confederates won, which I never wanted to see that. I think you even said it. You're like, I don't mm-hmm. want to see this. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out in April. Now, I know that they came out with like a little uh, video about it. I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? Quick. It was like 
like for the throne, and it kind of, it kind of recaps different things. Okay, throughout, perfect. Throughout, throughout you can walk the, me through that throughout this um, throughout the series. Uh, I think one of the cool parts is back in the beginning, um, in season one, when uh, Daenerys or Khaleesi, uh, it was Khaleesi at the time, was eating um, the what was it like a heart or something? Oh, when she ate the uh, the uh, the heart of the horse, right? Yeah, because she was trying to bring back. Um, no, it's it, it's a ritual. Ritual, that's right. Because she was pregnant. Oh, I thought it had to do with with her trying to get. Oh no, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're 100 percent right. We'll have to rewatch the whole. Yeah. So you can remember. Woo! It's going to be a long series. Funny thing is, we're not even talking about that particular Game of Thrones, but I thought we should throw that in there. Okay. Now, we know that Game of Thrones is ending, but they don't want it to end. HBO still of wants not. to make the, the gravy train of Game of Thrones, so they're working on prequels. Now, we know there's about five in the works. Well, oh, my one of God. Them, five? Yeah, we've talked about this. Yeah, so one of them is officially coming through, and uh-huh. it's getting a series order. Well, they've casted two actors. Now, the first person to be casted in this series is Naomi Watts. Oh, my God. I'm sold. Now, you might recognize her from 2005's King Kong. She was also in The Impossible with Ewan McGregor. Uh, she was in St. Vincent. I mean, mm-hmm. she's been in countless things. I could say even the Divergent series, if I'm correct, right? She was in that. Wasn't she in the Divergent series? Yes, I think she is. Chris is looking at I'm her looking notes. Look at the show notes. Yeah, so she was in that. Now, her character is being described as a... And this is what I saw on mm-hmm. here. Charismatic, socialite, or socialite, hiding a dark secret. Oh. Well, a lot of the internet is already speculating. Mm-hmm. And it seems to scream, and I agree with it, Lannister. Mm-hmm. Right? It yeah. says Lannister. Yeah. And she's got the blonde hair. Yeah. And I think of Cersei, and mm-hmm. I think of Joffrey. Mm-hmm. And... And this casting was kind of uh, brought up because George R. R. Martin, the creator of Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. uh, the books, no, not the series. Well, he had a hand in it, but he, he's the creator of Game of Thrones. He did a blog about this. Mm-hmm. Which, I, I see that. It's from his website. Yeah, it got him in a little bit of trouble, too, by the way. Why? He alluded that the title of this series would be called The Long Night. Does oh. that ring a bell, The Long Night? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you real quick. What is it? What do you think of when you think of The Long Night? Well, they... um. They don't talk about some, they talk about something similar to that, right? In the show? Yeah, and I looked it up. It refers to a time mm-hmm. when the winter, remember winter yeah. would last for thousands of years and the yeah. white walkers emerged. Yes. It refer it's referring to that time. Okay, so I was right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Well I didn't really go into like specific details. So but. yeah, just think of it as like it's the win it's the long winter before Robert's Rebellion, which should later on become Game of Thrones. Yes. Now HBO caught wind of this, immediately said... Cease and desist. Well, they just told Jar Jar Mar and he okay, came back. Hey, He's hey, like, hey, it's, now. you know, The Long Night isn't the official title. Yeah. But I have to say, it's a great title. It would be a really Why good not? title, yeah. What's the luck that HBO's going to be like... Change it. The title is The Long Night. We just didn't want to tell anybody. I like it. It refers to something that, like you said, you're familiar. You heard The Long Night. You're like, oh, I, I, it's, it's got to be winter. And they also casted a young actor named Josh Whitmore. Mm-hmm. He's in a mystery role. No one knows. It's a lead role, but nobody knows what it is. Most likely, probably not the same family, I would assume. I, I don't know if I could watch a whole show just about the Lanners- Lannisters. The Lannisters. But then Maybe. again, I say to myself, Maybe. yes, you could. Maybe. Because they're always in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Now, I saw some other tidbits about the mm-hmm. show online. Now, this will take place, apparently. Now, don't hold me. But this is what they're saying. But apparently, it'll, it'll be in... The setting of the time is before and during of the dark times. Okay. Which would be winter, and this will also revolve around the secrets of Westeros, the origin of the White Walkers, mm-hmm. and mysteries to the east of the Starks. Okay. Now, like I said, I don't know if this is for sure set in stone, but this is what I've been reading online. Mm-hmm. Right there, I want to know the origin of the White Walkers. That'd be cool to see that. Even though it, I think it's kind of already been brought up in Game they've of already, Thrones, like they've already kind of like walked around it and but, kind of gave us like a quick little, yeah, like cliff notes of how the walk the White Walkers. It's as quick as Hodor saying Hodor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Secrets of Westeros. I'm up for that. I think that that is a fascinating world. Yeah, I love to see the dark times because in Game of Thrones, the show they've been talking about this mm-hmm. the dark times, mm-hmm. and a lot of people didn't remember it, or people did remember it. And I'm like, ooh, that'd be kind of cool. Like, I think there even is, like, early in, early in the series where they tell one of the the young kids that um, they're born in the, in, in the summertime. That they don't know what it was like. 
it hasn't been dark for centuries or something, or like years or something like that. Are you talking about the first episode with Ned Stark when he was saying, yeah. like, he he freaked out when it was winter? Yeah, I don't know, something He's like, like that. Well, one of the things that really intrigues me about this pro- uh, this project, mm-hmm. this series, is Naomi Watts. She's a great actress. She is. I don't know if she's ever really got her due. She's always been great Remember in everything I've seen her. the movie with her and Tom Holland and Ewan McGregor? Oh, yeah, I just said it earlier. The Impossible. Yeah, that was That's really right, good. Tom Holland was in there. Yeah, that was That's really a great good. film. I think that was about the tsunami, right? Mm-hmm. That was incredible. Yeah, wasn't she in that one scene where she's, like, in the water? And she and gets she, cut. And she almost died because they held her on. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a great actress. So, for me, I think she can play a perfect villain. Because it sounds like a villain. A, a charismatic socialite hiding a dark secret. That sounds like Cersei's mom. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like somebody in the... It's the long line of Lannisters. Yeah. And he does a lot of Lannisters. Yeah, I don't know much about this young actor, this Josh Withmore, but mm-hmm. I'm sure he's fantastic. Because oh, Game of, of Thrones doesn't pick no. chumps when no, it comes to uh, things. The best part about this prequel series of Game of Thrones is it's going to finally show us how horrible life was before the actual show that we're watching right now. Because it doesn't sound like it was very pretty. From what they talk about, you know, just in brief sequences in the show, it sounds like life was complete shit. <laughs> Wow. And it wasn't perfect. It was it was horrible. If it if it's already horrible in Game of Thrones, this is like this is on steroids. What do you think about that? I mean, it's gonna we're gonna go into the dark times. I think that's the best part about this is the dark times. I want to see what winter was that lasted a thousand years. The only thing I'm afraid of is I don't want them to stretch this out too much. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, like, if it takes place like, thousands of years, like, I don't know if we need five prequels. I don't know if all of them are going to make it. It's just five are in development. Okay. I mean, this but sounds, I want all I mean, five. Of course you do. <laughs> I mean, this sounds interesting. I think I'm going to wait to kind of get a little bit more if I get too hyped. You know how I get when I get too hyped. Prequels are tricky. Yes. You can go down several routes. Yes. For TV, uh, you don't watch the show, but I have. Uh, Better Call Saul mm-hmm. is just as good to me as Breaking Bad. That's a good one. Uh, going to movies-wise... Star Wars prequels have never lived up to the original trilogy. No. That's a concern. So you can either go two routes. Or even right now, Fantastic Beast is not as hailed as the original Harry Potter trilogy exactly. as well. So TV-wise, it can either go Better Call Saul. I'm trying to think of another series. Well, Fear the Walking Dead is not that bad either. That is true. So you can go down the Fear the Walking Dead path where it's not as good as the original, but it's decent. Mm-hmm. I like it better, personally. Or you can go down the Better Call Saul route where like it's pretty good. They're almost close to each other. In quality. I guess that's where it can go. Or it can completely go sideways and be like, this sucks. True, <laughs> In fact, true, true. this feels like winter. <laughs> I mean, like, that's how I feel. But overall, I'm excited about the casting. Naomi Watts, this is a perfect show for her. I think this is going to be great. And I'm just curious, like you, I want more tidbits. But if it's about winter. It'll be interesting. Think about a thousand plus years of winter. It's like being on the naughty list over and over from Santa Claus. And instead of... Santa Claus, it's a fucking White Walker <laughs> coming at you. That's horrible. So we'll keep an eye on this show, but um, definitely April, we're going to finally finish Game of Thrones. Yeah, and then, I, I think I'm more excited for that right now. Well, this this show, I believe, I'm, I'm going to take a real quick look here. I think this show arrives in 2019. Wow. Or it's going to film in 2019. 2019. Okay. It's going to film in 2019. I don't know if it's going to arrive, but from what I saw, it said it was going to arrive in 2019, but if not early 2020. They definitely want to make sure that the show does not overlap the current one. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's it for the TV news. Over on the video game side, something that I really want to play video game wise, but they are now making a series and it's, it's divided fans. Let's talk about The Witcher. Now, Netflix is adapting. The Witcher. Now, The Witcher is actually books that have become comics and video games. Most likely, most people know it from the video games. And a while back, they casted Henry Cavill. And I think this was during that whole Superman debacle yes. that we had talked about. But people were worried that if he took the role of the main character in The Witcher, that he was basically done as Superman. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll never know until Warner Brothers officially tells us anything, but... The Witcher. A lot of people are excited. Henry Cavill. You know, he's got the he's got the physique. Now I sent Chris a photo of what the Witcher his name is uh Geralt uh, Ravia? Rav- yeah, Ravia. Geralt. Now he's a big imposing guy. He's got white long hair. He's got a little bit of facial hair. This is the video game description. And mm. he's got a little bit of a scar. And of course everything will be in the show notes as I had mentioned previously. Now our first look has finally came of Henry Cavill as Geralt of uh, Ravia. 
Now, Carissa, you saw this first. I remember you were telling me about this. You're like, a lot of people are not happy about this because in in the Netflix little short teaser clip, where he's or he's like kind of like walking up towards the camera. Yeah, I'll hand this back to you. I, I kind of know what it looks like. Um, yeah, when he's when he comes up to the camera, a lot of people weren't happy. Why do you think that is? He looks like he's stepping out of Lord of the Rings. Like, <laughs> he looks like he's Orlando Bloom's ca- uh, brother exactly. in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You know what I mean? He looks it's like he like, could have been in the Game of Thrones prequel we just talked about. Yeah. And he just came in yeah, and was like, hey. Exactly. And so, um, looking at like a, a photo side by side, I think what they should have done okay. is the character in the, in the game has a little bit of a beard. Yes. And a mustache. Yes. I think they should have added a little more facial hair. Henry Cavill's character, just looking at this photo, has a little bit of like a like five o'clock shadow. Yeah, so he's clean. I think I think that would have made him look a little bit older because this character I'm looking at right now from the game looks about 10, 15 years older than Cavill. Yeah. So I mean, is this a prequel then? Okay, so in the Chris is right. In the video game, he has a little bit of a, a beard. Mm-hmm. And in the clip, it looks like he's mostly pretty much clean shaven. And he's also missing his scar. Yeah. Now, I looked this up. I guess in the books, he's actually clean shaven. In the video games, when they adapted him into video games, mm-hmm. they made him have facial hair. Facial hair looks so, good. So, this right here says to me, this is going to be a prequel. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to learn how he got the scar. Okay. And I sure, I'm sure he'll grow facial hair. I would assume so. Because you're right. He looks like sexy Orlando Bloom's older brother that I have no interest in watching Lord of the Rings now. Or, <laughs> or maybe uh, they should have lightened his hair a couple of shades and not look so white. Hmm. Because your hair will eventually turn, you know, gray, white, the older you get. And I think maybe that would have made, no, he'll look more like freaking Orlando Bloom. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. I'm or not, Fifty Shades of Gray. He's looking like I'm one of those not, guys. I'm not feeling this. Okay, well, you're right. I watch it, though. I, I love Henry Cavill. Well, if this is a prequel, then this would all make sense. Yeah. So fans are not happy. Video game fans. I hate, no. to, I hate to let them down, but in why the books, are, he's clean shaven. No, so why are they not happy? They don't like the look. Same reason? Yeah, facial hair and the scar. That's what's really dividing okay. people. So this might be a prequel. But while you were saying this, two things came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Two actors who I really think would have been perfect for this, mm-hmm. but it would have been definitely more present time than a prequel because mm-hmm. henry cavill is a lot young is really yeah. young compared yeah. to these two. sean bean ned stark would have fit oh, this really yeah. well also would have been um ray stevenson who played oh, uh yes. volstag yes in thor and he was the punisher in punisher mm-hmm. warzone he'd be fantastic both of those heavy imposing guys mm-hmm. the only problem is they're just basically the age of Geralt revia in the games true 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 so they want to go with someone younger i'm okay with it i'm actually excited for this series i've wanted to play the games this sounds really cool. Do you want to know what The Witcher is? Yes. All right. The Witcher is about a world where Jira of Rivia mm-hmm. is a monster hunter who travels the world who possesses supernatural powers, and they're okay. called Witchers. Ooh. All right. Okay. Right here. Chris knows. I'm already in. Yep. That sounds, I like, see that sounds like something that's right up your alley. Super Supernatural powers. I think, did I say superhero or supernatural? I don't even know. Supernatural powers. I'm up for. Plus, I like this type of timeline because it kind of gives me this... Okay, well, Game of Thrones is ending. Funny that we're talking about this. It's a li- That's the main course. Mm-hmm. I have to wake up the next day and have breakfast, so I'll get the prequel. What if this becomes my new dinner? And you know what? Doesn't make doesn't like I, I don't understand with you. <laughs> you like all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But you don't like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what is going on with you? Because I'm bored. <laughs> oh my god, you're boring. <laughs> No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Okay, so what do you think about the Witcher? Like so they, I'm so mad at you right now. So Jorah is a monster hunter, and he travels around the world, and he possesses supernatural powers, and he's called a Witcher. I think that's pretty cool. So this is going to be pretty expensive, right? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. They're going to spend some money here. But so far, this sounds good. I'm excited for it. What about you? I mean, this is a big role for Henry Cavill. Now, the scary part about this mm-hmm. is fans... Take this stuff serious. So if the Witcher bombs, this is going to hurt Henry Cavill. Oh, yeah. But truth be told, Henry Cavill acting ability, his physicality is not being questioned. He's fantastic. Mission Impossible Fall, he's fantastic. Superman, he's been fantastic. Um, I'm just concerned with where they're going with this series. For me and you, this is going to be easy for us because it's going into shallow water. 
because we're not really this is our first time getting in the pool. Mm-hmm. For a lot of Witcher fans who maybe read the books, most likely it's the video game um, fans. They're going into the deep end. They're already in the deep end, so they're in the deep end, going like, "Hey, what, what's going on?" Like, yeah. you know, I want to, I want to go into familiar territory. So they're concerned. So I hope they do give him the scar because you're right, one hundred percent. He looks like Orlando Bloom's sexy brother from Lord of the Rings. Like if they're remaking the show, it's like they gave what's his name, Legolas. Legolas is that his name? Legolas. Legolas. It looks like they they the Amazon TV show they're making. Uh-huh. They recasted Orlando Bloom with a sexier guy in Buffer. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So I'm concerned with that. I'm a little intrigued though. So am I because I mean you know you started asking me what do I think and then you kept talking. Sorry. And I never got to say what I thought. I'm getting all jacked. I up. know. I'm sorry. And so <laughs> I'm intrigued. I like Henry Cavill. Okay. Um, I would actually do. Do you have this game? I don't, but I should. Maybe I should pick it up. You should pick it up so I can watch you play. Because you know I'm okay. not good at video games. Okay. Unless it's, unless it's Mario Kart, I kick ass. But <laughs> you should get the game, like I was saying, and um, we watch you play, and then we watch the show. Okay, that sounds good to me. I, I'm. Maybe I can get mad with everyone else. Okay. Well, I so far <laughs> for for us who have no idea about this, this sounds exciting. Henry Cavill's got me on board. Mm-hmm. I just want to see him look a little bit more. Grizzlier, I guess, because in you know, I guess you should go with the video game adaptation because he yeah. looks fantastic. So that's it for the uh, video game news. Let's move over to let's move over to the movie news. Two things we're going to be talking about: sequels. So we'll start with a Quiet Place no, Two. No, I don't want another one. So back I think, on, I think it ended the way it should. Back on episode thirty-nine, timestamp forty-three minutes and seven seconds, we talked about. A Quiet Place 2, they got a release date. Do you remember that? I think it was May 2020. May mm-hmm. 15th, 2020. And you and me were already voicing concerns. We didn't want this. We don't think it's good. Leave it alone. It's a great film debut for first-time director John Krasinski. Leave it alone. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Well, unfortunately, he can't leave it alone. He can leave the office, but he can't leave this alone. Turns out, since he kind of he co-wrote, he starred, and he directed the first one, the question is, okay, they're making a second one. Is he coming back, in, and in what capacity mm-hmm. will he be returning in? We finally figured it out. He will be writing A Quiet Place too. So there okay. is no idea if he's going to direct. Obviously, he's not going to come back, but he is writing it. First thing that came out of my mouth when I read this, why? 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 I know that's that's four words not the first thing that came out of my mouth but it I came thought, out in that sequence i thought you were gonna do from the office when michael's like no no no, no. that's what she said no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> whoops i actually hit the mic a little bit um oh my goodness so he's gonna write it i don't know i mean i'm just he apparently has something some idea of what he wants to do with the sequel i know that there was room for a sequel yeah. in a quiet place yeah. doesn't mean we need it i, I mean know. I don't want him to come back like his character because he died. Oh, yeah. He can't come back. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it because I really did love A Quiet Place. It was a great film. Um, it was the, the get out of 2018. Yeah. It just blew you out of the, out oh, of the water. Oh, wow. Yeah. So good. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of sequels all the time. Okay. Well, work with me right here. This is what I'm okay. thinking about it. Is A Quiet Place maybe hitting familiar territory by following a similar path of a, another franchise that has to deal with a monster? Cloverfield. Could they do True. a Cloverfield world okay. where it's different okay. stories? Okay, okay, okay. Could they do different stories? Or Possible. Or maybe they shouldn't do Cloverfield and actually focus on a legit sequel. Now, Cloverfield has a universe, and each of the films somehow will tie in to the cloverfield S type of thing, but mm-hmm. they're different. Quiet Place can go that route and maybe tell a different person's story, mm-hmm. or do you want to see it continue from where the first film left off and what happened with that? I think I would like more like a Cloverfield kind of. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to go with, I honestly thought you were going to go with the straight up sequel. I mean, I love Emily Blunt. But yeah. I think uh, like a universe would be interesting. The universe. That, mm-hmm. that, that would make it more appetizing. Yeah. And be able to, to, to shake things up. Yeah. I'm just curious what what they are working on because I know there's a lot to work with, but you have to be really careful because expectations are high mm-hmm. and you don't want to you don't want to disappoint us because then we're going to be like, why did you even make it? Mm-hmm. Like, why am I here? <laughs> Instead of like, why are they making this? They're like, why am I in this movie theater? That's what I'm kind of worried about. But 
John Krasinski really blew me out of the park with his performance and what he co-wrote and his directorial debut. So I will have a little faith in him, even though I'm not very happy about this. I think it'd be better if he wrote this and doesn't come back because you don't want to do that. That's like Bradley Cooper doing another Star is Born, but a different, like a different take on it, if that makes sense. I don't want it. So that's how I feel about it, but it's going to be competing with the big leagues, May 15, 2020. You want him to come back and direct it, or are you just like, just write it, leave it alone? <laughs> just write it. No, no, I'm okay with him directing it. Oh, really? Why yeah. is that, though? I'm just curious. Um, I thought he did a really good job for his first time directing. You have a lot of faith that he can strike gold twice. Possibly. Really? Okay, I'm cool. I-, I can see that. I can see that. I mean, sure, why not? All right, well, that's all I have for Quiet Place 2. Let's move over to another sequel. Don't Breathe 2. Oh, wow. Don't Breathe was really good. Yeah, I like Don't Breathe. The first one was really good. I forgot it came out in 2016, so mm-hmm. it's, it's already been two years. This is a film I really enjoyed, and I remember we walked out, and I really wanted the second one because of where they went with the characters of the first film. Now, director, I hope I'm saying this right, Fide Alvarez, he co-wrote and directed the first one, and he currently is... Still working on probably press for his current film that's out, The Girl in the Spider's Web, oh, a yeah. new dragon tattoo story. I hate that part of that title. That one, uh, it's whatever. But going back to Don't Breathe 2, he says that there's still a script and he wants to get the sequel made, whether he directs it or not. Right here, this is a different case. Mm-hmm. I want him to direct the second one. Why? Because the first one, you and me don't flock out to these type of movies. No. And the way he brought, the way he delivered with tension Mm -hmm. and it was a thriller and it was suspenseful and it was like you and me were having a hard time since still it's all credit to him because he was able yeah remember that is that when we did the double movie feature that day i don't think so no are you sure no we just no we went to one movie it was late at night okay yeah we went with trial oh that's right okay or do you remember that movie right Yes. Yes. It was really crazy, yes, right? The the man was blind, but he was like an assassin. Yes, it's, it's about three three teens. Well, not, mm-hmm. th- not teens, but three young people break into his house yeah. to steal something from him. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they get stuck in there, and mm-hmm. they have to somehow survive with his ultrasonic daredevil hearing. Yes. And he is a monster at, like, suspense. Like, just the way he would build things in that by trying to get them. This film was fantastic. I cannot believe that we still don't have a, a sequel already. And I'll say this because this movie made a lot of money. It got really good reviews and it definitely left the door open for a sequel. I don't know if we really needed it, but I wanted it just to see where they would go because of how well that Fide Alvarez was able to like, remember, I think we even saw like how he would shoot things. We saw yeah. like early previews of like how he would build things. And I thought it was incredible. Why is it taking this long? Besides him probably doing the girl in the spider's web, True, true. I would think that his next best step, because that film is that film did not do as well as everyone hoped, he should come back to this franchise and finish it. I mean, because if not, we're I don't know if anybody's going to be waiting two more years for a Don't Breed sequel, because our attention spans are not that good anymore. Like, we'll forget something in a heartbeat if it's not a big franchise. But what do you think? You know, I, I think it's been a while. Since the first one. Yeah, we haven't. I haven't seen it since then. Yeah. But it was really good. I remember mm-hmm. that. But I couldn't believe that. I would think by now they would have a sequel. Right? So 2019, they got to get it going, right? Yeah. By next year. They have it out. By this time, has to be out, right? Yeah. If not, people are going to be like, don't breathe too. What is that? Yeah, because if you enter the 2020 range, you got it's Quiet Place too. Yeah. Yeah, you don't far. have to worry about it. Yeah. Are you curious to what, what they got in the cards for that that's one? That's what I'm thinking right now. And sorry, that's why I went quiet. I'm thinking. You remember? What? Like what are they gonna what are they gonna do? Do you remember? Didn't she thought she escaped? Okay, so right? if you haven't seen Don't Breathe, I'm gonna give you a few seconds and we're gonna talk about it. Okay. So remember she ends up getting out because yeah. she found out that he was kidnapping uh a girl and I think he I think she she escaped. I don't remember what happened to him, but I think we thought he died. Yeah. She's She's at walking, the airport. She's walking down. The, she's at the, the airport. Oh, the airport? Okay, 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 yeah, cool, cool. So you might not remember this, remember this part, but there was a part, I don't know if it was like after the credits or whatever, or at the end, her and her little sibling, remember she was trying to make money to get them out of their mm-hmm. sh- their situation? They were leaving and she saw a news thing on the, air, on the like on, at the airport, like one of the monitors that said that he had escaped or that they couldn't find him. Mm-hmm. So he's out there. 
So they, she started freaking out because she was worried that he's gonna come get her. So that's that's how it ended. Okay. Do you remember that? Vaguely. Okay, so Carissa was challenging whether or not I was correct on "Don't Breathe," and it turns out I was most most likely I well no I was correct most of it. The only difference was the blind man survived. He got shot, but he reported only two people. There's three people that broke in his house. So, and he said nothing was stolen. So that's why she was freaking out at the airport with her young sibling because he didn't say anything. So he's coming after her. He wants that money. So that's the only parts that I missed out. But yeah, the, the film's really good. I think they need to get this done immediately before the hype is gone. You know what I mean? It's been, it's going to be it's three been years. It's been a while. Yeah. So definitely Fide Alvarez, leave the dragon tattoo world. Go back to Don't Breathe. Whether or not you direct or not, I think you need to. Just get it done. So that's it for the movie news. Let's move over to... Let's take a stroll down Superheroes Alley. This is going to be a really quick one because I know Chris is not going to care about this. But Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg in Justice League. I can't say the DC world because he's only been in that in Batman vs. Superman. Wants a solo film. No, oh, so does everyone else. But... If he gets his chance to pick who he wants to direct it, he's already picked somebody. Who? All right. Zack Snyder. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, he wants Zack Snyder to direct it if he, if he had his chance to pick. Well, Justice League, the Snyder Cut, had a lot more Cyborg in it. Okay. So put it that way. Why do you think so? Because he was trying to build Cyborg's story, and then that got cut in the final version with the Josh Whedon version of mm-hmm. it. So, we know that they dated a Cyborg film for 2020. It's not making that release date. You no. know it. I know it. I think he's been put on the back burner. I like him. Actually, he's my favorite Justice League character. I was more interested in his backstory. So, me and Zack Snyder are the only two that cared about it. But, yeah, he wants Zack Snyder to direct it. If he had to choose for the solo film for uh, Cyborg, the director would be Zack Snyder. What do you think? Um, I'm over here like, you think I mean, Warner Bros. is going to go back to Zack no, Snyder? No. I don't think that's a... That's a logical answer. Does that make sense? It's yeah. kind of like, I want a million dollars kind of response. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I think he could have just said someone else. <laughs> What's more likely to happen? Get a million dollars or Zack Snyder returning to the DC film universe and directing Cyborg? Getting Hopefully a million dollars. dollars. Yeah. He says that Cyborg has the potential to be a superhero film we have never seen. Okay, so that I agree with. Yes. I'm not docking Cyborg. I just think everyone else did. No, I actually, I actually was a little. I was very interested, but I don't feel like I got enough of that character. Yeah. And then I had to ask you things during the movie, and that was kind of irritating me about the movie. But that's not the point. The point is, I don't think that's a realistic choice. Choice, and, and that's why he is the. Uh, you know, I want a million dollars. You know, like come on, man, like be reasonable. That's not going to happen. Oh yeah. Um, There's other directors out there that probably would get a, a exactly, better chance. Exactly. What about um, the director of Dope? Oh, Rick from Wheat. Remember, he's doing The Mandalorian, so he's oh, out. Oh, yeah. Shit. But that was a good choice, by the way. Um, Actually, here, I'll put somebody okay, up. Okay, go, go. We don't really know much about his body of work, but Cree 2 is, uh, from what I've heard, it's, it's pretty decent. It's pretty good. Okay. Why not get, I think his name is Steven. Let me look up his name, but he might be a choice for it because he just did Cree, And it's hard to do a top of original film that a lot of people didn't expect to be good or people did and it blew everyone out of the water with expectations yeah let me look up the director real quick here and i, I think this would be the perfect choice okay i i guess i had the name right i just want to double check steven capel jr now he's the one who directed creek 2 okay this would be a good opportunity for him to enter the big leagues by tackling a superhero property and he might be able to add his own flavor to it because the only downfall with Creed 2 for this director yes. was he had to fill someone else's shoes and he had to pick up somebody else's franchise. Yes. And he seemed to do a pretty good job for what they're saying about Creed 2. So why not give this young director an opportunity mm-hmm. to take on a superhero franchise that nobody is clamoring for because Justice Lee did him, kind of did him dirty with not really explain things like you were saying. You were kind of like, I don't really know this character and... You know, he can feel his toes, but, you know, he, he, he that's the only human. Remember that? Remember that? I can feel my toes. And everyone's like, okay. I heard people groaning, like, about it. But Stephen uh, Cable Jr. could come in and really shake things up with this with yeah. this hero. Make this hero a big deal. You know what I mean? Because if we're not going to get Batman anytime soon, if we're not going to get Superman, and we got Wonder Woman, we got Aquaman, whenever they show up with the Flash, why not get Cyborg going? Yeah, why, why not? not? 
And I think this director would be a perfect choice for it because even though I haven't seen much of his work, I haven't seen Creed 2 or seen it in a few days. From what I hear, he did a pretty good job with jumping into someone else's franchise and really making it his own. Mm-hmm. And I think why not let him create his own superhero film? Why not let him create his own big franchise? Why not? Because if you can jump into somebody else's franchise and really carve your own niche and make your film pretty good. It may not be as good as the first one, but you did a pretty good job where a lot of people would fail like... Matthew Vaughn did Kick-Ass, and then Jeff Wad- Wadlow did Kick-Ass 2, and that was not very good. In fact, I hate that. That I killed the franchise. Even, I don't even talk about it. Yeah, so right here, Stephen Capel Jr. did really good with Creed 2 from what everyone's saying. Okay. Give it to him. Why not? There he goes, Ray Fisher, not Zack Snyder. Give it to somebody who hasn't... I mean, I understand, <laughs> the DC I understand world. Just kidding. why. I mean, like, you know, if someone gave, you know... Y- if someone gave your character, you know, the justice it deserved, get it? <laughs> um, I understand why, but be realistic. Like, come on, man. Oh, oh yeah. Come on. No, actually, I don't know why everyone hated that film I toasting. I thought that was kind of funny, but everyone was groaning. I remember what show we saw it, and I'm like, oh, wow, people hate Cyborg. I actually liked the movie. I actually thought it was pretty decent. I actually liked it more than you did. I Yes, that is a yeah. fact. Here's the thing, too. Why... I don't want to say anything bad, but why Zack Snyder? Now, I have nothing against Zack Snyder, and I'll tell you what. One, I love a lot of his movies. He did 300, which I think is a great film. He did Watchmen, which I think is a hard property to adapt into a film with with, with it being a huge, a pretty decent-sized graphic novel full of content. He did a fantastic job. So I have a special place for Zack Snyder. I just don't really care for Batman versus Superman. No. I like Man of Steel. Yes. You know, Sucker Punch is whatever. It's not the greatest film. Oh, please shut up. You freaking love that movie. It's okay. But the good thing about Zack Snyder is he understands creating a world. Yes. Like his his background, his sets, they're amazing. And I get why Ray Fisher wants him because he did a he probably did a great job with building cyborg and kind of probably shortcut some of the other characters and everyone's like nobody cares about this joshua's like he's gotta go <laughs> you know what i mean but at the end of the day i think there's room for this character to, to still get a solo film give it to a, a capable director and stephen capel capel jr sorry Zack snyder you're gonna have to go to a different universe and i think it'd be great so that's what i, I think preach. ray fisher preach all right so that's it we're gonna head out of the alley and let's talk about some new trailers we got three of them let's talk about once upon a Deadpool. Let's start with that one oh, first. Oh God. Okay, so I love this trailer. I know it you do. It was so I funny. Know you do. Um. I mean, it starts off with snowflakes with Deadpool's yes. little logo. Uh, we get Fred Savage, mm-hmm. like Savage okay, Fred so Savage. Let's just say hypothetically. Okay. Somebody who's listening doesn't know Fred Savage. Okay, so I'm Fred- not saying it's me. Like I know Fred Savage. I, I know because I've asked you. <laughs> All right, so Fred Savage is famous for the show, The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years, I love that show. Yeah, that's and his brother is Ben Savage from, from Boy Meets Boy World. Boy Meets World, so. I love that show even more. But if you're a real big fan of Fred Savage, you probably know him from Princess Bride. He was a young kid that was getting the story read to him by his grandpa. So Fred Savage is looks like, and we've talked about this, is reprising his role from Princess Bride as an adult. Mm-hmm. And Deadpool has held him hostage to tell him a PG-13 version of Deadpool. Right off the bat, the snowflakes, how it starts. Fred Savage being a savage, not wanting even to be there. Yeah. Fantastic. I love their banter. Well, it was funny because he's like, he goes, I I usually like Marvel movies better. He's like, yes. He's like, well, we are Marvel. He's like, "Uh, not really. License. Yes. Yeah. With association with Marvel. I love the dicks. Made me laugh. So hard, Patrick like looked over and like glared at me. No, but I thought it was funny. I was just like, "That's the one that sold you." And That's also, a good one. I love the up reference to that old couple sitting on the bench. Like, oh, I loved you up. You may not want to get attached. So the trailer to me looks fantastic. It doesn't yeah. really dive into anything else. So I love this trailer. Regardless, I can't wait for it. December twelfth. I know we talked about earlier what's going on. The trailer is great. You don't see anything about the story, but we do see familiar Deadpool. References we see Negasonic, we see Yuki, we see Colossus. So mm-hmm. I can only imagine what, what this movie's gonna be about. I'm excited for it. Thumbs up for me. Next one, let's go over to Dumbo. I know you want to talk about Dumbo. Let's do Dumbo. So Dumbo I'm excited for released Dumbo. their official trailer. Yes. The first one was a teaser. This yes. is the official trailer. Yes, yes. Wow. It Tim looks Burn. amazing. This really kind of is nostalgic for me because it feels like Tim. Burn is in his groove. Yes. Because this world looks incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, the circus come, like, it, the sets come to life and the actors look to be in the zone. And I didn't realize this with the first teaser trailer, mm-hmm. but this is kind of a reunion of Batman, 
of Batman, Penguin, mm-hmm. Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah. I just, yeah. man, Michael Keane just plays a really good villain. Yes. And Danny DeVito, I haven't seen him in a while. He looks fantastic. Colin Farrell, I'm glad to see him doing a role. But let's talk about Dumbo. Dumbo. The CGI is incredible. It's that Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Apes type of thing. So lifelike. Yes. And I love that Tim Burns doing this because I think Tim Burns brings this to life. I'm I'm super, super excited for this movie. I know you are. I know you are. Um, That's why I got in there real quick. I love Dumbo. I love elephants. Um, They did a great job with the elephant. But this looks... Like it's a li- it looks a little different from the, well, it's, the it's, animated, but at the same time, it just wow. I know like, you're visually wow. Um, but I'm just like oh, like I I can't even think of words of how I want to describe this. The CGI and the and the sets look like um, the, the animation looks fantastic in this. I mean, it's not animation, it's CGI. I'm sorry. Like I went back and like looked at like the Beauty and the Beast teaser, and then I'm compared to the Aladdin teaser. Cinderella teaser. Getting better. Yeah. Yeah, the CGI's like, getting better. Right? I'm, like, so excited. Like, I think... Sorry, I'm, I'm hitting the mic. I'm so excited I am. This looks really great. And then when you see Dumbo and his mom, and she's caged up, and it's like, oh, my God. I remember crying as a kid. Yeah, there's familiar beats in this with the with the mom and, and, and Dumbo. And, then and the, him the, flying around. The flying yeah. around. And then... Uh, remind me, because you're a little bit... Them making fun of him. Making fun of him, yeah. Because he's a freak, in a sense. And like, then somebody... And then... Uh, I think Michael Keane's character wants him for money. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. It looks pretty... It looks like it's going to be pretty special next yes. year. And I think that Tim Burns in his groove. So definitely I love this trailer. I think this is a great trailer. So excited. Now let's move on to our final trailer. The Curse of La Llorona. Oh yeah, you got it. There you Yay, go. I got Patrick it. was like practicing how to say that. I can't say it. How to say it. And he's like, he's like, how do you say it? La Llorona? And I'm like, La Llorona. And he's like, La Llorona. I'm like, La? He's like, La? I'm like, yeah. I can't even roll my R now. <laughs> La Llorona. So I told him, Mango, just, just imitate the guy in, in the trailer. And that's how he said but it. But it's funny, though, because in the trailer, um, they have, what is the actress's name from Freaks and Geeks? Uh, Linda Carvanelli. Yes, Carvarelli. yes. And, and She's and, great. And, and, oh, yeah, I love her. And in the trailer, she even said that, what is the curse of La Llorona? I go, see, Patrick, they say it like that. Just say how you do you say it. La Llorona. There you go. Anyways, so this trailer, when when I first saw the poster for this for this movie and before the trailer dropped, yeah, you were talking to me. I was about like, this. "Oh my god, they're making a movie of this!" And Patrick's like, "What?" I go, "Do you remember that story I used to tell you?" Now, this is considered a folk story, and there are different iterations. Iterations. From what you told me, there's different uh, versions of it. Yes. And so the story that I was told as a kid, it's, it's, it's supposed to scare you, right? Some people believe in it. Some people don't believe in it. Don't believe it. Pat doesn't believe in ghosts, so he doesn't believe in it. No, but I like supernatural stuff. I know. It's weird, <laughs> right? So pretty much the story that I was told as a kid is this woman, they use it as like a scare tactic, right? Um, This woman ends up drowning her kids. Oh, that's lovely. And she's stuck in the in-between. She couldn't get into heaven because she murdered her children. And she can't go to hell? But she's not going to hell. Why is she not going to hell? I mean, that's pretty... That's, she's, she's on the basis of, like, she's the cursed. minimum of criteria. She's cursed. Her. She's in the in-between. Oh. This sounds like and Shutter so, Island. Uh, and so, um, a little different. Obviously, this is um, longer than Shutter Island, I would And assume. so, pretty much... Um, Story-wise. The, the myth is, if you're near water... Okay. Or if you're pregnant... Um, okay, well, I can only qualify for one of those. And you hear her crying... <laughs> it's not water. <laughs> You're so stupid. And you hear her crying. In, okay. She says in Spanish, my kids. Okay, okay. Well, Mis hijos. Okay. Is, she say that in the trailer? She does. Okay. You do cool. hear that, yes. Right. Right. We're going to get in this trailer in a second. I, got, I just like, want to hear her I, bring this up a little bit. I got ahead. like chills. I was like, oh, hell no. Ooh, I'm in um, water. No, i <laughs> You're so dumb. Stop. And so pretty much she she will take your kids. Okay. She's seeking- uh, More kids to drown? A male and a female because her kids were male and female. Okay. The story that I was told is she was a a poor woman in a village. Okay. And a man coming through the village, she was beautiful. And Mm -hmm. um, he ended up taking her from the village and he married her. Okay. They they got married. They had kids. One day she was in in the town that they lived in. And she saw him with another woman who's younger and more beautiful than her. Okay. And in rage, she 
Confirm them with cheaters. No, no, she she drowned her children. Oh, wow. Not realizing what she was doing until they were dead. They were submerged in water. So and she, she lost started, it. And she started crying. Mis hijos, mis hijos, my kids, my kids. And so the myth is she's a ghost in a sense. And it's a, it's a scare tactic. She's not remorseful for what she did, even though she realized, she didn't realize what she was doing until it was... Until it was done. Until her kids were dead. She's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know so, I mean? in... In the trailer, it's a, it's, um, I don't, I mean, they don't really go, I don't, they're probably going to go into it in the movie, but in, in the trailer, um. It's just kind of going through, like. Kind of. The, 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 this woman played by Linda Carverelli for Freaks Asking and Geeks. a priest. Yeah. Hawkeye's wife, I could say. Yeah. Yes. Like, um. What is this? Yeah. What is, uh, Cursed of Lyona? There you go, Patrick. I love it. Um, you sound like you're going to be in a soap opera soon. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> So pretty much, she's asking, "Is this is this true?" He goes to some, you know, and then um, it is it is set a little back though. It looks like maybe the seventies. Yes, I was going to tell you that because yeah. at first I thought this was was in present time, but then I noticed the vehicle was really old, a little bit older. But not only that, the way they're dressed, the way they're dressed. Yeah. Uh, this trailer was pretty. Uh, I was it was on my toes because you had told I me about screamed. it. But yeah, I got I'm you a few like, times. I'm like the biggest pansy though. Like I'll like you can like jump out of the corner and I'll scream. It looks but pretty good. It I looks mean, pretty good, especially when um, that kid sees her. Oh my! There were some pretty God. good jump scares. Like yes. he, she's she's like I cannot wait. She's like chase. She's like yeah, walking over to him, Ooh. and then he, she just disappears, and then she pops out another thing, which kind of was reminiscent to that nun trailer. Yeah. And then I love the suspense of when he gets in the vehicle and he's trying to lock the doors and roll up the windows and yeah. he keeps doing it and then finally you know, there he, she is yeah he, he's trying to grab this jacket and he opens the door and then she pops up and it, it got me too i just want to ask you yeah was she hispanic she looked white in that not because of her makeup she looked white so i'm a little confused in my story she was hispanic <laughs> in but, my version <laughs> but again there, there's so many like you know different versions of this um, i would think she'd be primarily hispanic right <laughs> because you, from, what you, from what you told me, this is kind of yeah. a, a folklore, right? Yeah, of folk- the Hispanic community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh-huh. is like their. Uh-huh. This is their scary. I don't know what what another one would be of a different culture, but is it like their Bloody Mary? Uh, yeah, yeah, your yeah. Bloody Mary. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this thing, when I saw the trailer, and I was thinking about two things popped yeah. in my head, and you're gonna laugh. Uh-huh. First was Shutter Island. Uh-huh. It's basically without DiCaprio and oh a Saint Asylum. Two. This also remind me of the game Left for Dead with oh, the Oh God, witches. Patrick, that is your favorite game. Yeah, where the witches cry and you're not supposed to bother them. Just let them cry and walk away from them. Mm-hmm. So that's no, the two things did. that came up to me, and it's not a bad thing either because those two things were I like both of those Left for Dead yeah. and Shadow. So this is a pretty cool combination. So do you think this will follow the most generic version of possibly? Yeah, first of all, you're not. Yeah, or will it follow? You think they're gonna? They're going to Hollywood it up a little bit. They might can... Hollywood up a little but bit. on the trailer, overall, it satisfied you, right? Oh, yeah. You were yeah. all excited. You knew oh, it was coming. Oh, my God. I was, like, so scared. I'm like, oh, my God. Get back. I get think the back. first... I think you were all jacked up when you first heard her go, what is La Llorona? And then he's like, the curse of La Llorona. <laughs> um, You're so stupid. You were all jacked up. No, I think it's a really good trailer. I think it really sets the bar for what this is. And I think for a lot of people who know this story, yeah. and a lot of us, like myself, who don't know the story... And everyone's talking about it that knows somebody who knows this story. I think this film's going to be a big deal. I like the trailer. I think the trailer sold me pretty well. I just want to know if – maybe I'll have to look at the trailer again if she's white because I, I don't – Why? What is your concern if she's white or not? Well, I don't want them to whitewash it up. Like, okay. You know, tell the story for what it is. Is it because she's dressed all in white? Well, besides that, I just when I I only you only see the actress for a quick second. I just yeah, but like, she's also supposed to be a ghost. Oh, that's true. But I thought she looked a little bit. I thought she was a Caucasian actress. Okay, so we'll find out. I guess I just don't want them to whitewash it up. Okay, okay like all right, all okay? right. Mm-hmm. The white guy over here doesn't want it all. Come on, man. We don't want Ghost in the Shell over here. Like, come on. But uh, out of all the three trailers, oh, I'm, definitely... I'm so hyped for that one. Like, I'm yeah, hyped and scared at the same that time. That one and w- Dumbo. Okay, so my trailer would probably be Dumbo. I think Dumbo was was the best of the three, but Curse of Liar or not was pretty good. Yeah, and Once Upon a Deadpool. The, come on, at the end, yeah, third, so, pretty good. So that's it for new trailers. Now let's go into the Funko. Funko! All right, guys. Oh, it's my favorite segment. Okay, so one of these. What's your favorite things, segment? Uh, yeah. Really. One of these. Um, one of these is a Funko Pop that has already come out, and people have already got in the mail. 
But we, I still want to talk about it. Sure. The other one, Patrick and I had an argument on whether or not I should bring this one up because Whoa. he said no one likes him. And I'm like, I don't give two fucks if anyone likes him. <laughs> okay, I don't like him. Okay. Okay. Well, to clarify that statement is uh-huh. that a lot of people don't like dorbs or vinyls. So I told Chris that you can't just bring a vinyl into a Funko section. Bring I can a, do whatever I want. Bring a Funko that people want to talk about or that people want to hear. And we can talk about, and then you can bring your vinyl because I also want this vinyl as well. But. Okay, the vinyl first. Okay, let's do the vinyl. So this will be released next month in December, which is only like a week away. You want me to do the voice? <laughs> and this is going to be from My Hero Academia. It is a vinyl. Ha, ha, ha. I am all might. I can't do it as well. No, not that great. You need to practice I did that. that one. I didn't practice that one. Oh, God. Clench your cheeks and say at the top of your lungs... I Nobody cares about vinyls. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say, I am here, I Patrick. Am. I am here in vinyls. Whatever. Have something to Anyway, fear. so this is based off of My Hero Academia, which is a manga that got adapted into a, um anime. Yeah. And we are obsessed, Carissa. Yes. It's obsessed with this. It's and great show. It's a great, great show. So We'll this, be reviewing it sometime in 2019. Shut up, I hate you. <laughs> so this is a two-pack. And it will have All Might, which is the number one hero. All vinyls come in two packs, right? I don't know, do they? Yes. I don't, I don't yes. collect vinyls, so I, I want this Vinyls one, always come in two packs. And Izuku Midoriya, which his name is Deku. Deku and All Might. Yes. And so All Might is in his stance with his... Now, All Might is known for this, like, big smile. He's always smiling. And that's part of his persona. Is even in Darkest Time, he smiles through everything. To give you hope. Izuku Midoriya is his, well, what would you say? His his successor. Sir, right? Because he'll be taking the, uh, yeah, without having to dive into it. Yes, yeah. they are somewhat friends and then and, and But they also have like a father-son relationship going on too. Listen here, young Midoriya. There you go. And so <laughs> All Might is in his costume and he has his big smile and his eyebrows and he's just totally cheesing in. He's like, I am here, Stans. And then Deku is ready for Badu. Badu. Battle. Ready for Badu. <laughs> Badu. Can't talk today, guys. Um, and he is in his costume and he has his hands and fists like he's ready to go. These look so cute. Again, I'm not really into vinyls, but it's my hero, so I want it. Okay, now the vinyls do a really good job with, with both characters because it looks a lot similar to the anime. Yes. And it looks pretty good. Yeah, so I, I mean, it's very similar to the anime. Like, All Might's eyes and his grin. It's just the body, obviously, you know, All Might's this hulking individual. But uh, I like the vinyls. I think these are going to be hot because the My Hero Academia Pops are huge, huge, huge sought after collectible items in the Funko world. So, going to vinyl, this might even be hotter. And you can get two of them. And they come out, you said December. I'm looking yes. at this right now. No, but I think the vinyls look cool. We're not really in the vinyls, but if it's My Hero Academia or some type of property, I'm interested in getting them. Yes, And yes. these will probably be our first vinyls. They probably will. Now, of course, Chris, it does have some Funko stuff for those yes, who actually yes, like Funko yes. Pops. We have some Funko Pop stuff. Well, this one actually is really cool, and I'm actually really sad because I almost bought this. But Pat convinced me not to. Yeah. So... We already have one, but not the not this version of it. But I know this one's cuter. So so get it. No, we cannot. I'm not paying. Like I'm not having. I'm not getting it from a reseller. No, I heard it was back online. It's not. I checked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. You told me wrong. So the Pikachu pop came out what in July? August? Yes, July. And we flocked out. We got ours, one each. Target is doing something with Funko for the holidays, where every Friday at 8 a.m. Central Time. Target will will reveal a new online exclusive Funko item and a sneak peek of the next week's release. So this so this last week, the first one was released, and it was a ten inch Pikachu. Oh, <gasps> Pika Pika! Yeah, and I had it in my cart, and I was waiting for someone to say, "Go ahead and buy it." And I was actually astonished that Patrick told me just pass. I really want to do a. We haven't done an, an actual Chasing the Wild video in a while, and I was hoping this tomorrow we could actually do one and maybe get a pop. Wh- whether Whatever it is, we'll figure it out. But I thought we'd rather do that than buy a 10-inch Pikachu. The Pikachu looks fantastic. I'm not complaining about that. I think it looks great. But I, I think that we can wait for something better. You know what I mean? What's better than a Pikachu? Maybe get a My Hero Academia pop. Find it somewhere. Hmm? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. 
But I am I am really curious to see what um and I think there's like an, at least another um four or five that Target will be releasing on Fridays. Why not give us another Pokemon? That's what I would like to. Why not just give, like it would have been cool if it was if it was a ten inch Charizard, I would have said Chris would buy an RB. You know what I mean? But like, another reason why he had me pass is because from what we've seen on social media, um, Target and other places are notorious for not shipping Funkos correctly. That's and they what, come damaged. Yeah, that was what, what now, the holdup was. Here is the kicker. A lot of people posted their Pikachus this week and Target took precaution and they bubble wrapped their Funkos. With our luck, they would not bubble. We've been the one that <sighs> didn't get the bubble wrap. I'm so mad. I wanted a big old Pikachu. And you said Target's going to be doing this for, for the next few Fridays, right? Yes. So, so next, so tomorrow. Tomorrow. 8 a.m. Central Time. We'll keep an eye on I guess. We'll keep an eye on We'll see what they release. We'll I, might, they release. I might pick it up and say, forget you, Patrick. I'm picking me so this one up. if you're big in the phone calls and you want to get something really cool, keep an eye on Target on Fridays. What what time did you say? 8 p.m. Central? Or 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Central Time. Okay. Cool. So that's it for the Funko news, and we Last are but not least. done. We have done everything we need to do. It's time to get in our ship. It's time to hit the navigational system because it is time to take me to the outer rim, which is our Star Wars segment where we talk about everything Star Wars related. And this one is a Episode Nine rumor I've heard for a while, and I want to talk about it now. I don't remember what other episode we talked about Emperor Palpatine. Actually, I do. It's back on episode 49. We talked about that they might bring back Emperor Palpatine to help guide Kylo Ren in a holographic form in a jungle planet. He discovers Palpatine's hol- holographic form or whatever, showing him a new weapon. Now, Chris and I thought that was complete bogus. Mm-hmm. Well, this one could hold up a little bit more, but Doctor Who alumni, one of the doctors, Matt Smith, we talked about, was part of the official cast announcement for episode 9. Rumor is he might be playing a young Palpatine. Ooh. Ooh. That one got your that one got your yeah, interest, Yeah, I huh? like him. I think he's a good actor. Really? Mm-hmm. I, wow. Okay, so for me, I pegged him as an Imperial officer because he's British, and they tend to be the ones that handle the First Order or the Empire or whatever. So that's my first initial thought was he's going to be part of the First Order. I'm a little curious on this. A young Palpatine. Is this going to kind of go back to, like, beyond the prequels then? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what? that's a strange mm-hmm. idea if that's what he was casted for. I mean, he could fit the the Emperor. That doesn't bother me. But I, I gotta be honest with you. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You don't buy it? Well, I don't know. Maybe not, because I keep bringing up this Palpatine. I mean, it's gotta be true, right? If everyone keeps talking about these rumors, right? That but, is true. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a slim chance this is true in the same sense of everyone's theories of who rape parents were. (laughs) Oh, that was a good one. That's how much I think that this rumor, I don't believe it. I mean, is it, if it is true, I mean, cool. I mean, if they do it in the right way, but nobody's really played the emperor outside of Ian McDermott. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how far are we going to go back into the, to the archives? I mean, we're trying to wrap this up and this is the last movie of this whole Skywalker trilogy. I don't think they have enough time to dive into Palpatine's, you know, younger self when they have to, yeah, they gotta, they gotta figure out this thing with Kylo. You know what I mean? So I don't believe it. Maybe he comes back as someone to guide him, I guess, a younger version, but then again, we're not familiar with that character, so we're just gonna be going, why? Why? Exactly. So I don't know. What do you think? I think they're stretching. He's too good of an actor to make him be a a younger version, right? Yeah. I think they should just make a whole new character for him. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. I hope that he's part of somehow the first war. Maybe he's like a ruthless version, or even a villain. Or maybe, well, that's why he's. I'll be honest with you. Oh, he, he's a villain. <laughs> Most likely, he's a villain. I didn't think that one through. That maybe totally he's General wrong. Hux's like you know rival. You know what I mean? Oh, Something God. like that. But he could be a good person. He could be on the uh, resistance. He could be. He could be a pilot. Who knows? Who knows? So we won't know until it's here. But I think that rumor is bogus. Sorry, I have to say that I don't believe it. You got anything else to say on it, Chris? Before we head out. Nope, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's jump in the TARDIS. Anyways. <laughs> now, we were teasing earlier in this episode something special. Yes, extra special. Now, a lot of times when we get something special, it is at a con. Right, Chris? I mean, that a lot of things true. we do at yeah, a con. Yeah. This time, it is this not the case. This is not con related at all. This is not con no. related at all. This is a huge deal for myself. And Chris, but a big deal for me because this is kind of like a fanboy's dream. Now, I know everyone's going to be like, oh my god, you got someone from Star Wars? No, I got the next best thing. Honestly, because if you know me, I love Star Wars, but I love 
Halo just as much. And I got somebody from Halo in a pretty cool special interview that was... It's, it's a pretty good amount. It's, it's yeah. close to 30 minutes long. I can't believe I freaked out. Yes. Because I... I mean, Patrick like loves... Loves... I love Halo. Halo. And I think I freaked out for him. Oh, yeah. And, and you hear it in the interview. It's so embarrassing. So... <laughs> I I'm, I can't, just saying it, it's still hard to believe, but we were able to sit down, metaphorically, and have a over chat. Over the phone. Yeah, ha- over the phone, with Steve Downs, the voice of Master, Master Chief, Chief. Sparn 117. Yes, you're hearing this correctly, Steve Downs. We had a conversation with him, and we talk about all kinds of things mm-hmm. in the Halo world, and we, we get do. to learn a little bit about his beginnings into radio and voice acting as well. So, without further ado, I can't believe I'm saying this. Tomorrow Comes Movies speaks with Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief Spar 117. Go ahead and enjoy this. This is the best thing you got on Black Friday. So, huge thank you to Steve Downs for this. Yes, Go thank ahead and enjoy. You. Hey, everyone. This is Patrick and... Clarissa. And we have a very special guest, somebody who whose voice I adore in one of my favorite video game franchises. We are here with Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief from the Halo game franchise. How you doing? Hey, guys. How you doing? We're doing good. Chris, are you okay? You look yeah. like you're you're real jacked up for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to talk to Master Chief. <laughs> easy now. <laughs> easy. <laughs> now we met you back at Phoenix, Arizona at Game On Expo. Yes. And right. uh, it was quite the pleasure. I wish I, I got a chance to interview you there, but by the time we had figured out that we could do interviews, uh, it was like the end of the day, and I was like, well, I got to meet him, so I was really jacked up about that. So Yeah, well, so, yeah, so, so we couldn't have connected then. That, that was a lot of fun, uh, that con. We had a great time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, uh, Chris, do you want to go ahead and ask him the first question? Yes. Um, our first question is, how did you get into radio and voice acting? When I was in college, I, uh, I was a... Uh, Frustrated musician, let's put it that way. I was a drummer <laughs> in a rock band, and uh, you know we had a band in school, and you know played around, you know fraternity parties, and you know you know little bars and that kind of thing. <laughs> and um, anyway, at some point, it became obvious to me that this was probably not a good career move, <laughs> you know, <laughs> long term, as it were. And um, so, but I, you know, I, I wanted to do something that involved music, and because that was my passion, really. And so I thought the next best thing would maybe to, you know, get into to record production. That seemed like a, you know, actual legitimate career that you could might be able to get a paycheck for and that kind of thing. And the closest avenue I had to getting into that was working at the college radio station. So I started work, you know, started doing that. And anyway, as fate would have it, I just, I just fell in love with that and never looked back and, and off I went. And from radio, much of a jump from radio to doing a uh, voiceover. And I started doing that when, and I was in uh, Los Angeles and, you know, began, uh, you know, getting involved in doing commercials and that sort of thing and, and been doing that ever since. Wow. I mean, that, that's pretty cool with the college radio doing that part. And people getting oh, to hear your voice. It was fantastic, yeah. It, no, it, it, it was, and I was very fortunate. The, the school was the University of Dayton, and they had a college radio station that was sort of not like the usual college radio stations. I mean, it was an actual commercial enterprise that actually sold commercials, and we got sort of real-world experience doing it. And and like I said, I just, you know, the, the, the ham in me and the ego in me wouldn't <laughs> let go. And, and, you know, I just, I, uh, I just fell in love with it. One of the questions that uh, a lot of people have asked me, because I, I know how you got the role of, of Master Chief, but a lot of people were asking me to ask you if you could briefly talk about how you got the role of Master Chief. Sure. So uh, I was in Chicago at the time, and so was Bungie, which, of course, you know, created Halo. And Marty O'Donnell, who wrote and performed most of the music in the original games and also cast uh, the voice talent, he used to listen to me on the radio. And, you know, I often say the biggest voiceover gig I ever got I never auditioned for because he just called me one day uh, actually it was about a year before they started doing Halo and asked me if I would voice a, a character in a small little PC game they were putting together and I said yeah and that's how I met Marty and we did the game and you know about a year later he called me again and said well we're working on this this new game here and we'd like you to do the role for Master Chief so and that's really how it happened and I just I just came in and it was a few days work and and that was that so it was just you know you know kind of one of those things <laughs> you know that just right place right time and it was uh, I was very fortunate that's incredible 
Our next question is, what preparations did you do to get into the voice of Master Chief? Well, originally, when I came in to do the read, you know, Marty, we... I. They didn't even have a sketch for me to look at. I mean, I I had no idea what the character looked like. So it was just really based off of Marty's description of who, of the game and who the character was. And, uh, so, you know, he explained that he was this augmented, uh, super soldier, um, man of few words, uh, et cetera, et cetera. He said, you know, kind of think of Clint Eastwood when he did the old, uh, spaghetti westerns oh, and wow. dirty yeah. Harry. You know, it was sort of a combination of of for a few dollars more and dirty Harry. <laughs> was, he was some master chief was somewhere in between those two. So that's that's what I used as a as a launching point to develop the the voice of the character. That seems like uh, I don't know much about voice acting, but was that a little bit of a challenge when you're not able to see what it what it looks like? Well. Yes and no. I mean, it was only the second video game character I, I had ever done, and you got to remember that most of the most of the voiceover I had been doing up before that was commercial voiceover, where all you are is a disembodied voice. There is no, so you kind of have to make that part up as to you know who who's doing the talking in you know this this um, you know Sears Craftsman commercial. Who is this guy? And so you. You invent that anyway. So it wasn't that much of a stretch to have to do that as far as Master Chief, because I basically just employed the same techniques of inventing a character. And the Clint Eastwood thing gave me, you know, like I said, a starting point that I could develop him uh, from there. So with most voiceover, certainly except for animation and video games, you don't really have a an actual physical embodiment of the character you're doing. So you, you invent one. And that's sort of what I did with Master Chief. Oh wow! Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. Uh, my yeah. next, uh, my next question is: After Halo Three had ended, and then they announced Halo Four, was there a lot of pressure returning to the series without Bungie? Yes, there was. They were really going to three four three was going to go in another direction with both Master Chief and Cortana. I mean, that that was never really said at the time, but I but I sort of knew what was. You when when they called me in to to read for it. First of all, you know, I had done you know, three of the games, so it seemed kind of silly to be auditioning for it. So they, they didn't call it an audition. They said they were trying to work out some technical things and, you know, wanted me to read some some script to see if, if some sort of technical issue was working. But really what it was about, really, was to see if I was up for what they were going to do, you know, with Master Chief, because as you know, there was, there was more dialogue in, yeah. in Halo 4, the relationship between the Chief and Cortana was going to be very, you know, much more intimate and deeper. And so that their original intent was to use other people, and fortunately, that didn't work out. <laughs> so, uh, so by the time Jen and I came in, uh, you know, but but I still felt the pressure. I, I still felt okay. Can I? Can I? You know, this isn't going to be just the chief yelling Cortana every every five minutes and and you know finish the fight. This is going to be a little more. There's going to be a little more. Uh, substance to it and so i felt some pressure but but i knew i could do it and i was anxious to do it and as i've said many times it, halo 4 went where i always hoped the the arc of the game would go you know that it would involve you know master chief and cortana in a, in a deeper way and i always hoped that that's where it was going to go and as it happens that's exactly what 343 did so i was thrilled to be able to to do it and needless to say the you know the technical workout as they called it went <laughs> fine and you know the rest is history yeah that's one of my favorite games of the series is because it was nice seeing the relationship kind of blossom and we got more yeah. dialogue and that's i'm glad that you said that because that's what i liked about it was i i like hearing your voice when i play the game and i'm about to get in the game i'm like if he says i need a weapon that's cool but when you're talking about like how you feel with cortana and, and she's losing yeah. it i was like yeah. this kind of makes the game more exciting because there's a story i like story with my games yeah. well me too and I, I i've always felt that that was you know one of the very special things about halo from the beginning was that they took a lot of time both bungie and 343 devoted a lot of time to the actual storytelling it wasn't just a shooter game you know it was it, there was also a story there which is what attracted me because you know people ask me all the time but you know if i play the game and i don't because i'm horrible <laughs> at it you know i i suck at <laughs> halo you know so but what attracted me to it was was the story because what I am a big fan of is science fiction, and so I loved 
the the story of Halo, and and that's what I you know, could really sink my teeth into. Our next question is: How would you define Master Chief and Cortana's relationship? Well, that's that's a good question. I don't know that I have a definitive answer for it. I, I you know, I've always felt that it it could be a number of things. You know, it could be a sibling relationship. It could be a you know a quasi romantic relationship. It could be simply uh, soldier to soldier, friends, you know, comrades in arms, that kind of thing. You know, there there there's a there's credence to each one of those possibilities. So it really, I guess it's kind of up to, to the, the, the gamer to decide what they, he or she wants that relationship to be. I think I fall somewhere. I think I, 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 I take all three of the pieces of all three of those possibilities. They're, you know, they're siblings because they were both created more or less by uh, Dr. Halsey, which would, in effect, make them brother and sister. They're certainly comrades. And as Halo 4 certainly I- indicated, I think there was deep feelings between the two of them for each other, which could lend a, a you know possible romantic aspect to it. Admittedly, it would be a strange romance. <laughs> but, but, you know... That's, uh, you know, there's been strange romances before, so, uh, you know, it's, it's very possible. Yeah, Star Wars comes to my mind in that New Hope with yeah. Luke and Leia. Yeah, there, there you go. Absolutely. With your relationship with Cortana and Master Chief, I always kind of thought it was about them. They could never have, well, especially Master Chief, he couldn't have a normal life, and he was always right. fighting to save us. And I always felt that there was a companionship and a little bit romantic in a way, like what you were saying. I always felt like I can never have a normal life, and she's my everything. She's one with yeah. me throughout this whole journey. And I right. always kind of felt that was the relationship to me of, and I, that's one of the best aspects of the game is that relationship between them. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I think, you know, they're, they're really... You know, each of them is the only entity that truly understands the other in a way that nobody else can. And, the, you know, which is what made the Halo 5 story so intriguing is, is you know, the, the, the strangeness or the, I guess I should say the, the, estrangeness of Cortana and Master Chief and, you know, how that's going to get put back together again, because obviously, you know, it's not the same relationship in Halo 5 as it was in Halo 4 Correct. or 3 or 2 or 1. Now, I know you do a lot of voice acting for, for Master Chief. You are Master Chief. Would you be up for doing, like, motion capture for, like, the next game, like Halo Infinite? Uh, I would be up for it, but I think, uh, you, you know, they have a, 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 a kind of gonna blank on his name that <laughs> morning. Um, shoot, I want to say... I'm sorry, I forget. He's, I've met him. He's a great guy, and he, did, and he did a great job as the mocap for Master Chief. So my guess is, you know, you know, they're going to stick with with him. He did a really good job of that, and uh, and I did I I did a decent job at the voice. So I think <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll probably keep the the, the roles separate. Really, uh, you know, Jen did the mocap in, in Halo 5 for oh, wow. both both, uh, both Cortana and, and Dr. Halsey, and uh, she does a fabulous job at it and was suspected that she'll continue in that role. Now, Halo 5 was, was kind of interesting because it seemed to divide fans. I would speak to a lot of people that play it, uh-huh. and everyone likes the game, but one of the, the, the biggest criticisms is lack of Master Chief as much in the game yeah. for, versus yeah. Locke. How did that make yeah. you feel when people would, would tell you that? Well, of course, I mean, you know, I'm going to say, yeah, (laughs) you know, again, you know, I know a lot. I think the biggest complaint that that I've heard of of the story part of, of Halo 5 was the difference between what was promised and what was delivered, that what was promised in some of the stuff that came out, the teasers and the promos and that kind of thing for Halo 5 what was promised is not what happened in the game. And uh, I think people didn't like that. You know, they, 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 they were given an idea of what was going to happen and then the game went in a completely different direction. That's the number one complaint that I've heard. And, and I understand that. I understand, you know, why they would feel that way. Uh, and then the sec, you know, yeah. And then the big thing was that, you know, more master chief and Frank O'Connor has, has said as much in interviews that, that that's not going to be the case in Halo Infinite. There'll be plenty of master chief. So I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited too. How excited are you? Know, you? Although I, I, I will say also, 
I did like the introduction of Agent Locke. Oh I, yeah, I like. You know, I think he, you know, added something to the game that can still be explored further. So I, I think uh, you know, maybe, maybe just a more balanced presentation between those two characters would be uh, appropriate. Oh yeah, I agree. I liked Locked. I was just, uh, I was always laughing when he was trying to get Master Chief, and I'm like, you're never going to get Master Chief. Like, yeah, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ain't going to happen. How excited are you to return to uh, the Halo world with Halo Infinite? Well, I'm very excited. I mean, I can't, there's not really much I can discuss about it at this point, but, you, you know, the promise was always that this was going to be uh, a, a, a three- you know, a, a trilogy. And so uh, obviously Halo Infinite will be the third in the trilogy. Now what happens after that, who can say, but you know, I'm, I'm very excited to see, you know, where we go from here. Well, I, I didn't know about the whole, the whole trilogy. I'm, that's actually interesting to know that I would definitely yeah, love when, to see it more games yeah, come when, out. Yeah. Well, and, that, and Frank has also said that too. I think they're leaving that door wide open, but when 343 announced their continuation of Halo, post Bungie, they said that it was going to be a three game arc. So, you know, again, and, you know, when I talk about, you know, future projects as far as Halo is concerned, you have to understand I'm talking about it as, as a fan and I, and I don't have any knowledge <laughs> that, that I can impart on this, but, but, you know, what I would assume that to mean is some sort of resolution to the story that began with Halo 4. So that that storyline, you know, theoretically might be completed in in the next game or not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, but then Frank has also said, you know, look, this this story, the Halo universe is is infinite, both literally and figuratively. So, you know, Halo as as a franchise could continue, you know on into the future there's no telling when or if you know there there might be some end to it hmm. now this this question is kind of funny for us but when you're out and about in public does anybody ever recognize your voice you know rarely um to be honest with you you know my my voice when i do master chief is not augmented in any way um <laughs> mechanically or technically or electronically but the pitch that i use is a little bit different than what my normal speaking voice would be so you know i don't go around you know <laughs> talking like master chief all the time you know when i'm you know yeah you know when i'm ordering a big mac and fries. <laughs> so so no to, to answer your question that 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 doesn't happen which is you know it's kind of fun you know voiceover in general is kind of fun like that because you know you can be you know sort of recognized when you choose to be recognized instead of you know if you're an on-camera person you know and and connected with you know a famous movie or show or whatever you know you can't go anywhere without being stopped or recognized and i would imagine you know that can be uh you know a little tedious after a while oh yeah and so so with voiceover you know that's not the case you're you know joe average guy you know unless the subject comes up you know when i'm with my wife and if the right people are around that she thinks might be gamers, she <laughs> inevitably brings it up. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's almost unavoidable. <laughs> now, I know we've been talking about it, but I know there's a, a Showtime Halo series coming out, and there's a, I know you can't talk anything about it, but one thing I would like to see in that series is you returning if they bring Master Chief into the series. I'd like to see you voice that character. Well, I... You and me both, brother. <laughs> um, I have to be, you know, perfectly honest. I have not, I haven't been contacted by anybody connected with that, with the series at this point. And, and I'm feeling that if that, if it hasn't happened by, because they, you know, they're going into production next year. Yeah. So usually by now someone would have reached out to me or to my agent and there would be some conversation about it and there hasn't been so my i I can only assume that they're going in a different direction as far as you know who's going to voice the character only because i you know like i said i haven't been contacted at all so that would indicate that um that something else is happening yeah see for us we were talking about because there's rumors that they're they're looking for a master chief there's nothing really concrete but i was telling her that to me you're the master chief in the same sentence of like James Earl Jones is Darth Vader in Star Wars. Right. 
I can't right, see anybody right. else playing it. And we were talking about this on our last episode, and I was just, I don't know if you ever feel like that, but I always feel that you are essentially Master Chief, and I couldn't see anybody else playing that character. Well, I appreciate that, and and, and believe me, uh, I love doing it, and I would love to be a part of, of the series. I mean, it, I think it's going to be fantastic, but, you know, uh, I... I it just it feels like that they're going to be doing something else so uh i could be wrong but i usually the way these things work uh there is some kind of you know contact made uh at this level and there hasn't been so i think they're going another way that's unfortunate now one thing well, they were going to make a halo film film series at one point yeah, and let right. me ask you would would that be like a dream come true for you uh of course yeah of course it would, as would the Showtime thing. I mean, you know, anything involving, you know, they, you, you have to understand that, that uh, you know, this is, it's like a childhood fantasy. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, think about it, you know, what young boy, you know, growing up didn't, you know, fantasize about being a superhero. I mean, it just, it was sort of, that's sort of a natural thing for most, for most kids. And to, to then at some point be able to actually really play one <laughs> has been, has been, uh, you know, has been fantastic. I mean, it's just, it's, it's been so much fun and, and interesting. And I've gotten to meet a lot of interesting people and the fans have been spectacular and, you know, go to convention. I mean, really, uh, Halo and Master Chief has, has taken me around the world quite literally. And, you know, so I've, I've been able to experience and do things that I never would have done. And all that aside, it's just a fun gig. <laughs> you know, I mean, just plain and simple. It's a fun gig. You know, when I finally get the call that they're ready to do another game, uh, I can't wait to to get involved and, and participate and then be able to watch, you know, how the game uh, and the making of it develops. Uh, you know, the way these things usually work is that the voice talent is usually added, you know, pretty close to the end of the production of the game. So you get to see not quite the finished product, but you get to see pretty close to the finished product. And it's pretty exciting and to be able to talk to the writers and the directors, and the, you know, all the people who are so intimately involved in it is it's just a, a thrill that, that I, I can't overstate, to be honest. That's fantastic to hear. For me, like, I think Halo's history is so rich that I always think to myself is, Will we ever get this movie? Because I think this there's big potential in, in filmmaking with this because of just the lore and, and the stories. And I always envision yep. seeing you on the big screen in a trailer, like saying, finish the fight or, you know, something like that. Well, I, you know, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it, uh, it, it may not happen. But, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, you're right. There, 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 there is a rich, very rich, uh, almost, you know, Game of Thrones-ish. Oh, yeah depth to to that story or at least potentially and i think part of the reason why it's taken so long to develop a, a real live action version of, of the halo story is um you know you you really only get one shot at it yeah and i mean i suppose that's not true you know there there's been good supermans and bad supermans there's yeah been good batmans and there's been bad batmans but you know, with this one, I think, you know, Microsoft and 343, you know, really want to be, make sure that they get it as right as they possibly can and not have it to be a disappointment as so many video games that are turned into movies are, you know, there's very few that you could say, wow, that, you know, that, that was a good adaptation. And, you know, many times it's a disappointment. And I think they 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 really want to try to get this one right. And I think that's why it's part of the reason why it's taken. You know, the other part is money. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that always figures into it. But I think it's, the, you know, it's the desire to, to really make sure that the story is right and the presentation is right and it's handled correctly. One franchise I really want to see you tackle, and it's, it's my favorite franchise, and then it's Halo, is Star Wars. I always think that your voice would be perfect for one of those characters in Star Wars. It's, it's interesting you say that. I tell you, uh, Patrick, if I had a nickel for every time I auditioned <laughs> for a Star Wars character, uh, I'd be a rich man. Uh, but I've never, I've never, I've never nailed one. And you know, part of it is that, that unlike some video game actors, voice actors, I, I don't have like a wide range. Of, of characters you know the guy who is the voice of uh, guilty spark in the first three games uh tim dadabo and he's he's a friend of mine and, and timmy's got a, a really wide range of characters that he can bring to the fore i mean i could play you you know snippets of three or four different characters that he's done and you would know it's the same person where with me you know, I 
that's not really my my thing i mean i have you know some range you know here and there but but you know pretty much what you hear is what you get <laughs> and and so you know when you're when you're identified so closely to to a major character you know sometimes i mean i've i you know i've done a few you know things here and there and you know, i did uh in the in the first uh animated adaptation of um uh what you call it of the avengers what am i thinking of star lord is yeah that's the avengers right yes. yeah yeah yeah, so so I did Star Lord, uh, the, the voice of Star Lord, that, and you know, if you listen to that, it doesn't sound exactly like Master Chief, but I think most people would say, "Wait a minute, that's the guy who does Master Chief." That's a this is a very long way of telling you I've never done a Star Wars character, <laughs> but you know that 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 story continues, and who knows what may happen there. What's the best advice you would give someone who wants to be in radio or voice <laughs> acting? Well, in both cases, um, I think. Developing just acting skills, you know, a lot of people, you know, think they have to go to some voice school or, or even a radio school. And really all they do is teach you the technical ends of the business. And that, that's the easiest part of the job. And in voice acting, you know, mic technique and all that. Yeah, there's something to learn there, but, but it, that's not, that's not the, the important part of it. It's how you interpret the words that are given to you because You'll often hear directors say this when you're, you know, reading for something, even if it's a commercial, is you want, you got to take, get the words off the page. In other words, don't sound like you're reading it. You know, it's got to be come from your heart. And the, the only way that can happen is, is through acting. So I always encourage people to take acting classes, uh, improv classes, I think are very important because many times with voice acting, you, uh, you know, you don't see the script until, 10 minutes before you're supposed to to do it. So, so, you know, that's what they call a cold read and that's not unusual. And even when you're auditioning for stuff, you know, you don't have a day or two to to work on it. In most cases, you have a a couple hours, you know, they need it by tomorrow morning or, or whatever the case may be. So if you could develop some improv skills, that really helps in terms of, you know, bringing those skills to voice acting. Oh, wow, I have to say that's some really good advice. We've talked to a lot of people, but I liked uh, hearing what you had to say. I think for us as podcasts, we have to improv sometimes too. Of course, yeah. of course you do. You know, I mean, right now, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you 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 have a list of questions you want to ask, but you know, you know, and I used to do a lot of. Uh, when I was in Los Angeles, I worked for a syndication company in addition to being on the radio. And I would go out and do interviews with people every day. And I mean, from all walks of life, you know, from, um, you know, book authors to actors to sports celebrities. And, you, you know, you, you come prepared with what you want to ask. But then you got to also be open to, you know, letting it go wherever it's going to go. You know, that can be, uh, you know, that's where, you know, sort of the improv, you know, comes into it. Actually, thank you for that. Because yeah, when I've done interviews, sometimes I get nervous and I know what I'm going to say, but then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say something differently. Because if not, I get tongue tied. That's one of my yeah yeah with interviews, I get well, tongue tied. You're doing a great job. Oh, <laughs> you know, both you and Chris, you know, this it's going very well. So so uh, you, you you're doing well. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and real quick before before uh, we we end this, I just wanted to make sure you plug in your social media. So if anybody wants to follow you. Um, oh, they'd be absolutely. able to. Yeah, it's uh, my my Twitter uh, handle is Steve Downs one one seven, and just go to you know Steve Downs on Facebook. There's a fan page there, and, uh, and you know absolutely you know jump in and you know and I uh, I'll say this I I don't do uh, I a lot of it, but when I you know it's kind of like Master Chief. I don't do a, <laughs> I, you know I don't do a lot of it, but but when I do do it, there's usually is because I have something to say. So um, I, I I like people to check it out for sure. I want to thank you for allowing us to do this interview, and it was an honor for me since I am the hugest. I mean, everyone tells you this, but I love Halo, and and it's a lot of it's due to your passion of of making Master Chief a three dimensional character. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. I appreciate that. It is uh, it is certainly a labor of love. That's for sure. I love doing it, and it's always I, I never get tired of people saying how much they enjoy the the game and the character. You know, that's always uh, that's always nice to hear. It's been you know a number of years that I've been doing this, but uh, it never gets old. I can tell you that. And awesome. I hope to see you at another convention. It was uh, it was one of my favorite conventions. Was finally meeting Master Chief. That was on my bucket list. 
Yeah, well, I was, it was my second uh, game on convention, and they were those were really good people, and they always you know put on a very well run con, and, and I enjoy doing that, and hopefully we'll be uh, doing it again soon. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Mr. Downs. It was an absolute pleasure from both of us. Yes. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Chris. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. You guys have a good day. You, you too. too. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. And we're back. I... How surreal... Sorry, my voice got loud. How surreal was that? It was pretty surreal because I actually listened to the interview about eight or nine times, and I was, like, smiling. I was kind of, like, laughing when we were laughing in the interview, but... It was so awesome because I feed a lot of my energy when I when I do interviews with people, you know, how they react. And he is so welcoming. He's so nice. And he was willing to answer all of our questions. Yeah. And I, I had a pleasure, especially talking about the pressure of Halo 4. I wanted to know that. That was one of the questions I had when I had played Halo 4 was, I wonder what the voice actors thought, especially Steve Downs. And I got that answer. We got to learn about him. He was apparently in a band. And it, yeah. He made the right choice, I think. <laughs> Because voice acting is fantastic, and, and it was really cool. Also, one of the coolest parts of this was him talking about, I did not know he did interviews. Yeah, And him cool. going through that and then understanding what we deal with with yeah. improv, and he was cracking me up. But uh, I had to ask him if people recognize him in person with his voice, and uh, apparently not when he's wearing that Big Mac. <laughs> That's so <laughs> but Wouldn't it be really funny, funny, right, if he was doing that? He's like, this is, this is uh, Master Chief, and I like a Big Mac. Like, it would crack me up. And we got to talk a little bit about his excitement for a Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we couldn't talk about it, any details if he knew anything, but just hearing him excited to come back and, and do another game. That's the best part about this whole interview was learning that he truly cares about this character that he voices. It's a responsibility, but he also says it's a great gig. Like He enjoys what he does, and that's something that really kind of amped up my level that after we record this, I'm going to play some Halo because I was all jacked up listening to the interview. Chris even caught me listening to the music earlier. Yes, I did. Getting all amped up. But uh, yeah, and also we got to talk a little bit about that Showtime Halo series. And right now he's hasn't heard anything about this series. So a little disappointing. I really want him to I really want him to voice the character if they're going to bring it into the, to the show like we talked about in the previous episode. So just want to take the time to say thank you to Steve Downs. It was an absolute pleasure, and I honestly would love to have you come back on when Halo Infinite releases. We could talk a little bit more about that, but we have a little something special that we had asked him to do, and I was so glad that he actually fulfilled the request. So let's go ahead and check it out. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Spartan 117, and you're tuned in to Tomorrow Comes the Movies. Finish the fight. Yes, you heard it correctly. He gave us a shout out. and. You will hear a part where Krissa, if you listen to the music of Halo, there's a part where like, oh, she does that. She <laughs> is, uh, I don't know what to describe that. What were you doing? Like, I don't even know. Do you remember it? Like, yeah. Oh. I don't, the only part of it made the cut, um, but it was cracking me up. You were so jacked up because you thought he was done and he's like, finish the fight. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it was really cool to ask him. If you would do it, and I think he did great. Yeah. yeah. In fact, when he did it, he said, Tomorrow Comes the Movies. I was saying to Chris after the interview, I said, man, he might have actually came out with a better name for the podcast. <laughs> We're going to change our name now. To Tomorrow Comes, Comes the, the Movies. movies. <laughs> no, but thank you to Steve Downs. He, he really didn't have to take the time out of his busy schedule, and he did. And I have to say, it was it was an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait for his next project. Yeah. If it's Halo Infinite, or if he does any voice acting, Star Wars. Are you listening? Yes. Please pick this guy up. I mean, he does a fantastic job with the character of Master Chief. I'm sure he, there's a character out there that he can just make his own in the Star Wars universe. So please give him a follow, and I hope to see him at another convention. So that was our Black Friday exciting deal for you, was basically listening to us fan out what Master Chief, even Krista <laughs> did. You you start off talking, and then you like slowly, like, me and him are... I'm kind of fanboying out, and then you would pop in once in a while, but at the end, oh, like that cracked Shut me up. Shut up, I hate you. I listened to it about 20 times, was like, I gotta get this in my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you think of the interview? It was really cool. I mean, it was like, oh, I'm like cheesing it right now, like, oh my god, that is unbelievable. Well, when he says in the interview, settle down. I know. You, you literally, like, ask one question, and you disappear for a while, and then you'd pop up. <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you to Steve Downs. It was a great interview, and I, I look forward to seeing him again in the con. And this is it for the episode. So This is it. 
With it being Thanksgiving, I would like to say to, as Krista would refer to them as the 10 listeners. Yes. We are very. Our 10 listeners. We are very thankful for those who have tuned in, who have supported us in this journey because a lot of people didn't think we would make it this far. Yeah. Or accomplish what we have accomplished. And we are very thankful. And in the great words of Steve Downs, AK Spar 117 Master Chief, we are finishing the fight. So yes. we're going to continue to keep going and it's been a ride and we can't wait for what 2019 uh, has in store for us. But we have some more stuff on the way. We you do. Know, there's we other do. stuff in the works. So, so exciting. Definitely. And uh, well, with it being the end of the episode, Crystal, where can they find this podcast if they like to listen to this podcast if it's their first time? In podcast format, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Overclass, Overclass, Overcast, Over- <laughs> Overclass, <laughs> Podbean, TuneIn, and Castbox. Overcast, she meant, but not Overclass. Don't type that into your browser. <laughs> now, what about social media wise? If they want to stay up to date with what we're doing on social media, what we post, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at TOC Movies. I'll be active on Black Friday with our Snapchat. Facebook. At Tomorrow Comes Movies. You can also subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch, Tomorrow Comes Movies, or TOC Movies. Yes, uh, might as well make an announcement. Our YouTube now has a custom URL. Did I say that right? URL. URL. Sorry. So yeah. for YouTube, you can go to youtube.com slash Tomorrow Comes Movies. All in one word. Don't do any spaces. And you'll find our link now. So that's our new link. So youtube.com slash Tomorrow Comes Movies. And, of course, we ask you if you could please give us a review on iTunes or Facebook, uh, Stitcher, any of those platforms. And, of course, Facebook. Please do a star rating of your choosing. And we really appreciate it. Come on. Let's, you know, let's make the holidays a little bit better. (laughs) Do us a Black Friday solid. Give us a review. And with that, I believe that is it. Yeah. I'm going to go play some Halo. So, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. It's a little... uh, Ahead of time, and also have a great Black Friday, and be safe. You yes. Know, we, we got in a car accident a while back, so... Please don't. Yeah, please be safe out there. It's going to be hectic. So, as always, your host are the Patrick and... Carissa. Master Chief never misses Black Friday. Episode 54. Finish the fight. Good night.